I want to see black people just having fun and not having to worry about the blue lights in the background or or the tension that comes with being black in America. Like, I want to show so many stories uh, across the spectrum of blackness. How aware were you of the fact that most NFL players, when they do decide to retire, are not very successful? I mean, I think it was that really daunting statistic about how 65% of them file for bankruptcy after they they retire. How aware were you of that and, and how did that influence how you wanted to exit the league? Greatly. It greatly influenced it because I, you know, I had guys that I played with that I'm talking captains. I'm talking, you know, ring of honor for the teams that we played with together, like just mountain of men, you know, crumbling being out of the league because they subscribe to the idea that like they made it. But then when they're out, they're 33 years old and they have nothing to wake up to. They have nothing to go out and get that day. It's just like, yeah, I'm this football player. I've always been this football player. And, you know, I see the, I see the guys that I always, I always laugh at the guys that wake up and tweet like, it's a great day to be a New York Giant. I'm like, bro, you've been retired for six years. Like, what are you doing? Like, go, go golf and go do something. And I just seeing that and knowing I just didn't want to be that guy um definitely fueled me but I, I'd say the first time I really thought about the other side not even being that bad is when I had a I had an internship with Quest Diagnostics after my after my season and I'm talking like I had my little desk I had my little coffee mug like my little satchel with the papers and folders in it doing like marketing internships with them and I get home I get home at like six o'clock I think it was like a Warriors game was on cracked like two or three beers that night and was like this was a good day. Like I, I worked, I had team meetings and all that stuff with, with our, with my quest team, but like I'm getting home. My body doesn't hurt. Had a couple beers, fell asleep, woke, woke up 10 o'clock. I'm, I'm back at work. And I was like, this doesn't feel as bad as the coaches make it out to be. They always say like, you're never, you're never going to want to get a corporate job. You're never going to do that. Like play as long as you can, all this stuff. But I'm sitting there, you know, in my little J crew, uh, uh, plaid shirt like this is fine like this is straight <laughs> <laughs> well one of the uh I think the most interesting stat that I came across about your playing career is that you have one career sack proud of it too. okay my one. <laughs> well, I, I, so you're one I need to know when was it who was it what happened uh Kansas City Chiefs against I think it was I think it was uh Alex uh what's the name Alex Smith Alex Smith um that was actually one of the best games I ever played I was guarding it was either running back or receiver out the backfield on the other side of the field and I saw he broke to the opposite side and I think I got an ME in that a mental error because I knew I had my guy locked down but I saw him scrolling I'm uh, scrambling so I left my guy in space and took off running after him and I knocked him out of bounds. We like fell out of bounds and whatnot. And I got up and I remember thinking like, I think that might be a sack. Like he was behind the line of scrimmage. And I like looked to my coach and I was like, was that a sack? And he looks, he goes, I think that was a sack. I'm like, all right, there we go. But <laughs> you know, that was my, that was my one. I, I had so many other, other, other opportunities to, to have him, like, you know, slip out my hands or ball thrown away or whatever. But I'm, I'm proud of my one. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other interesting note uh, that I read about your playing career is apparently your Super Bowl ring was stolen. Yep. Yep. In the, in the same still year, has not resurfaced. Ring. Still not resurfaced. So. So what happened? It was it was last year, last March. Um, it was earlier that year. We just had we just been getting rain like every other day. It felt like at the at the top of 2019 and. This is one of the first days that it was sunny. Um, the day before that, because of the rain, I found some molding in my in my ceiling in my office. So I spent the whole Saturday like taking down that roof, like that ceiling. But my contractor was like, "Yo, like we need to air this out. So just crack the window a little bit um, and let the air take it." So I did that. Thought nothing of it. Uh, me and my wife, we went out to this farmers market and. I think we were just out there maybe a little bit too long. And on our way back, we were thinking, hey, let's grab some pizza before we go home. Um, pull up to the house, and I noticed the screen was down uh, off the window. My, my wife, she's pregnant with my son at the time, was like, why is the screen down? And I told her, like, wait here. I ran inside and, like, screamed, like, terrified. I don't know what's about to happen. But they trashed the room. Um, 
They got a couple other things, but by far the Super Bowl ring was the first thing. And like, it was so crazy because like I don't keep my Super Bowl ring out. I don't keep. I don't. I don't have it out. It was literally because two weeks before I took it to an elementary school day, a career day, and I usually keep it at my grandfather's house. He keeps it safe, tucked away. And for two weeks, I was like, yo, I really need to like get this back over there. I don't like having it in the house. So I, I tucked it in like the bottom shelf of my desk and they weren't looking for it. Honestly, it's just, I feel like because they flipped over the desk, like everything fell out and they saw like the Tiffany bag. Um, and obviously like that's such an iconic color that they're like, oh, this is something. But I haven't seen it since. Um, essentially the case is closed. Can't really, the, apparently the police had an ID, but they're, they're so tied up with what they can do and, and attempting to do things right that they couldn't really do, they couldn't really do anything. So it's gone for right now. I, I know I can get a new one. Uh, I can get the Giants to make me a new one, but um, one, I'm not trying to spend 20, what, $5,000 on jewelry right now uh, or, or ever. Um, hopefully, I'll, hopefully it turns up. But if not, maybe down the road, uh, I'll be in a position to where that amount of money doesn't mean anything to me and I can get another one. But yeah, I haven't seen it in over a year. If you have Spencer pacing in the ring, get it back, man. Please. Do the right thing. We can do a get cash it. reward. We can do you something. See what I'm saying? Get it back. If it, <laughs> does it have your like initials on like something that you would know it's, yours? It says Pacinger, my number is it's it is my ring. Like they attempted to try to pawn it a few days after they stole it, but the camera that the pawn shop had was like grainy. They couldn't, they couldn't tell anything from it. But um, pawn shops won't take that stuff because they know unless it's the person coming in whose name it is and it's not listed on some type of directory that they have, like it's likely stolen. So it might be, it's honestly probably just in some kid's drawer right now that he's like, yo, I got the Super Bowl. Jeez, unbelievable. Um, all right, my final football question because it's always a hot topic. Is Eli Manning your former quarterback, a Hall of Famer? I think he is. I think he is. Okay. It's seeing how he came to work every day. I know this doesn't really go into that process, but like you can't deny that playoff Eli is among the greats. And a, a lot of people say, oh, you know, his, his regular season. I think he has literally has like an even record of like, I think it was like 116 and 116, like the definition of 50 50. But um, nah, I got to go with my guy. He is definitely a Hall of Famer, you know, to be the GOAT that's Tom Brady. Like, the arguably the greatest quarterback to ever play the game to beat him not once but twice in the Super Bowl and uh, his stats speak for itself. Like he, I don't think he's first ballot, but I think I think that's going to be the deciding factor of like the decision of if he gets into the Hall of Fame will be like okay he's not first ballot but we'll give him a second ballot. That's going to like solidify his like for all you guys I think he's not in the Hall of Fame like we're just going to make him work for it for like one more year. <laughs> that'll make them feel better yeah um well you 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 have a all-american under your belt um what's next for you i mean is this something it, it's you start out the gate with a project about your life uh, do you want to continue to build material around sports or my, around your life or would you like to go in a, a new direction like what's sort of a little bit of the the vision board from here on out yeah yeah so like you know, I've been asked this question a lot. It's like, is this enough? Is, is this show like what you want your name to be in this industry? I'm like, no, like, I would love for this to be my first project in the industry, um, but by no means my last. Um, I've written two features already, you know, both of them being shopped right now, I'm doing a handful of scripted and unscripted projects. But the, the how I write and, and what I want to write is, is just sort of broadening the spectrum of you know black culture and, and specifically my experience in this world where a lot of a lot of things that are going nowadays are always tied to some type of police brutality or some type of struggle or whatever and I'm like no like I want to have fun too I want to see black people just having fun and not having to worry about the blue lights in the background or or the tension that comes with being black in America like I want to show so many stories of, of, across the spectrum of blackness instead of just police brutality and struggle so a lot of what I'm writing is geared towards that um I, I look I look at guys like you know Gambino and Jamar Carmichael and, and Issa Rae as you know just telling stories of blackness and it not being not having to feel like you're educating another community about what it means to be black it's just like no this is a story that's unique to us and if we like it I'm all for it so yeah I'm uh I'm in and of this industry now. As much as I said I was a professional football player, like I, I pride myself in saying I'm a TV, TV and film producer now.